This was the last year before the economic meltdown. Before the, that was the last year in which everything in the kingdom was wonderful. The state sent us exactly the amount of money that we had for enrollment. Now notice that at that time, what the section counts were, and we had 5,800 sections at the time, right? Then the depression hit, okay? And uh, then if you go down to the current year that we're in right now, we reduced the sections by 200. We did. But if you look, and uh, if you look at the FTS, the number of students that we are actually running through the system, it is significantly more than in the day before the flood. So, my question to you as a teacher is, what did we do? Why, how, how could it happen that we are, we did over time skinny out 200 sections, but we have served an additional uh, 2,800 students. How did we do that? We felt sorry for those students that couldn't get in, so I packed all my classes with everybody I could. I think other teachers did that too. We wanted to, you know, the students, you feel bad. So you say, well, okay, I'll take a few more. So I do everything I can even now to get them in there, but I'm very careful to make sure they all have a chair. And this is the, uh, I'm sorry, was there another, right? I mean, basically, right, the only way that this could happen, you have fewer sections, but more students, is that the faculty are taking more students per section. Now, that may not be each individual, but as a whole, the faculty are teaching larger classes. And I think probably because of what you just said, out of the goodness of your heart, But what Chancellor Scott says is that the faculty, and only the faculty, have the call about academic excellence. And at some point in a limited resource environment, okay, which is where we are now, you have to make a call and just say, you know what, we have, we're not going to go all the way back, <laughs> but, you know, in the interest of, of academic excellence, all right, we simply can't keep asking the faculty, because we're not going to add expense <laughs> any longer. We simply can't keep asking the faculty to add more, more students, more students. In fact, that's one of the students' complaints. One of the students they consistently come to the board and say, my class is jammed. Okay, well, it's a math problem, right? Two plus two have to equal four. If we want to loosen up the, you know, you have fewer students in a class, we're going to have to cut the number of sections because they're not sending any more money. Do you see, they're sending less money now than they sent four years ago, but you took more students. Now that is a hallmark of how caring our faculty are. But from, and thank goodness we have a little bit of a cushion, but what all we're saying is that no, we're not going to, one year, let's, let's drive it back to here, okay? But we have to begin the process this year, begin the process this year of dialing it back without injuring current students because we already took these students in. So what we need to do is to do, uh, I think, two things at once, is to keep our commitment to our current students, but to use the, uh, these new tools that we have to shape our enrollment management so that students, you know, so that we're giving priority to the students who can most benefit. Which is not to say we are going to abandon, we are not uh, going to abandon our commitment to basic skills English, basic skills math, ESL, our CE student, we are not going to do that. But we have to find another way. <laughs> because uh, the way we're doing it now is, to use the term, not sustainable. Okay, this, this is not sustainable. Not just from a budget standpoint, it's not sustainable from a um, faculty, I wanna be a 
great teacher standpoint. You know, so. Have we exhausted everyone? Is there anything else?